Hello. It's uh, really great to be here. This talk is titled uh, Beyond Horizon, and we're going to show you a cool new way to manage uh, your OpenStack uh, installations along with the rest of your infrastructure. So first, uh, a few words about us. I'm Dimitris, and this is Chris. We work on Mist.io, which is software as a service and an open source project. We run an office in Athens, Greece, where we do most of the product development, and another one in San Francisco. Uh, without further delay, let's look at the agenda. We're going to take a brief look on, the, on today's computing landscape, on the ways we do computing, uh, the pain points we've identified, and um, our story in coming up with Mist.io. We'll um, take a look at the major functionality, uh, We'll uh, look under the hood and go for a bold live demo. Then we'll dive into some more advanced uh, use cases. The one has to do with uh, the US midterm elections that took place yesterday. And the other one is about SDN and NFV testing. Then we'll tell you about our next steps and we'll make sure to save some time for questions. So today's computing landscape looks a bit like this. Uh, we have a growing bunch of public clouds with different uh, advantages and different pricing policies. Uh, then we have private clouds where OpenStack is gaining uh, more and more mindset. The use of containers is on the rise since uh, Docker and uh, other technologies like CoreOS are building on this trend. And then we still have uh, those old school bare metal boxes that uh, make a lot of noise and consume power. Maybe they're part of a legacy application or they're nodes in your OpenStack private clouds. All those uh, platforms have um, pretty much common needs in terms of management. Um, you need to provision new machines. You need to deploy uh, complex applications that consist of several different uh, machines. You need to monitor the applications themselves, uh, the systems, and uh, also the environment. You need to be notified when uh, there, uh, those metrics go out of the norm. And in some cases, you want to automate some actions when that happens. So uh, all those different uh, technologies have pretty much common management needs, but each one comes with its own set of tools. So all this power comes uh, with a cost, and we have to use our set of golden handcuffs you either go with a single prov provider and use their tools, uh, but then um, you need to be sure that they will stay, um, they will stay competitive in terms of uh, provided features and pricing. Or maybe this is not an option and you do have um, to combine different technologies in hybrid setups. Uh, and you do have to use uh, different tools, but then complexity is growing and becomes its own constraint. So, yeah, in the OpenStack world, the main management tool is Horizon. It uh, provides a dashboard for managing your machines, for provisioning new machines, for provisioning networks, configuring security, and more. So, why would we need something else? Well, Horizon doesn't help at all in terms of monitoring. Uh, it doesn't uh, send alerts, it doesn't um, do automation. Uh, you just get a list of your running instances, and even that list is not up to date. You need to hit that refresh button uh, because uh, it doesn't use any polling technologies or web sockets. Uh, it does provide a VNC console, but um, I would argue that this is not the best way to control your servers, and it doesn't always work. Then it's limited to OpenStack uh, deployments, and you need a different version of Horizon for each uh, OpenStack installation. And I don't know if you've tried uh, using Horizon through a touchscreen, or if you have to perform some management while on the go. You're probably out of luck. It doesn't uh, work so well. These were the problems that we were fi facing, me and my co-founders. We were working together since 2009. We were running a software consultancy, developing systems uh, for different clients uh, across the world. And we had to manage them and respond to any incidents. So we started scratching our own needs, building a tool that um, 
we need it, that uh, a unified dashboard for the different uh, platforms, and uh, we made sure to that it was uh, mobile friendly to allow us to act from anywhere we were. So we quickly realized that this was a rather common need. Uh, we had uh, an initial open source implementation, so we applied to Mozilla's accelerator program, Web Forward. Uh, we got accepted, and in early 2013, we traveled to California. We followed through the program, learned a lot, um, uh, built our network, raised our first money, and um, we've um, attracted some world-class advisors. We recruited a kick-ass team, and we did all that in order to uh, develop an awesome solution. Mistio, which provides a unified dashboard supporting the most popular public and private clouds. Uh, it will monitor your machines at all times, measuring the system metrics, application metrics, and any custom metric uh, you would like. You can uh, configure events that trigger either alerts or automated actions. So, for example, if some process is leaking memory, you can ask Mr. Io to automatically restart it whenever the usage is uh, over some threshold. Uh, and when you need uh, to intervene manually, uh, you will receive an alert and you can uh, tap on that alert and you can have an uh, interactive uh, SSH uh, console, a command shell, to address your problems from anywhere you are. But since most of the time you won't be working from your smartphone, we've also built a RESTful API and a set of command line tools and some Python bindings. We're working on uh, bindings on more languages. Um, so for example, let's say you want to provision a new server and assign it to a new network. This is how you would do it. Just import missed client, instantiate it with your credentials, uh, select the, the backend. This one is named Juno. Um, here's how I would create the, a private network. And this is how I would create the machine itself. Uh, I w I'll call it dev1, assign it with the dev tag, and uh, also assign it to both, both the public and the private networks. And now I can um, control uh, my machines. I can send batch commands. This would, uh, send, uh, this would update and upgrade all my dev servers, all the servers that uh, have the dev tag. And this is also possible through the command line using the missed command, just like that. You can uh, perform more advanced uh, operations. This would configure um, automation, the automation I mentioned before, restarting a service that's leaking memory when the, low, when the usage is over 95%. And we also have uh, some Ansible integration. So this command would uh, run this playbook on all my Linode uh, machines. So before we go for a live demo, uh, let's look under the hood. Mistio is a Python web application. It, uh, it's built uh, on Pyramid and uses, uh, it's served through uWSGI. The user interacts either through an HTML5 app through the browser or through the command line tools that I mentioned before or through a native Android application that's about to be released. Um, both the native Android app and the HTML5 app, they stay up to date using WebSockets, while the command line tools use the rest RESTful API. Uh, the server will uh, query your, um, uh, your cloud backends using their native APIs through libcloud, a uh, library that provides a common abstraction layer. And uh, Mr. IO can also connect to your machines using SSH if you provide a key. Uh, in order to give you the SSH console, the command uh, shell, and also to install CollectD. CollectD is an open source uh, monitoring agent. Uh, it's really li lightweight. And to install it in order to provide monitoring. It um, will uh, collect uh, samples of all the system metrics and any custom metrics you configured. And every five seconds, it will send uh, these da data points to our monitor servers. There we do some uh, pre-processing for consistency and store everything in a graphite cluster. We've also built an alerting module. So when the incoming data points satisfy your rules, uh, we'll it will either send you an alert or trigger some automated action. And 
without further delay, let's pass on to Chris for the live demo. Okay, then. We land here, and this is the Mist.io homepage uh, with a lot of information from here. For so let's start from the top. Everything for Mist.io, every cloud provider is a backend. So here I have added an EC2 uh, backend, uh, our own OpenStack Juno installation, a Google Compute Engine, even a Docker host uh, that we treat as a Docker uh, backend, and HP Helion Cloud, and those two OpenStack F0 and OpenStack FE are bare metal servers that can be added as uh, backends. Those two host uh, our own two different uh, OpenStack installations. Moving, moving further down, I can see that uh, I can have a look at all my monitored and uh, running machines. We will see that in detail later. I can uh, look at all my available OS images. I can click at one and uh, provision a machine with that. Uh, I can see all my networks. We'll talk about networks uh, later. And all my SSH uh, keys. And at the, dopum, at the bottom, there is... Uh, a stacked graph for all my monitored machines, and from here I can have uh, some quick overview, and it seems that Berlin, I think, is handling some peculiar weight. We'll see later what we can do about that. So, to add another backend, we have another OpenStack installation. Uh, we provide the support for Azure bare metal servers, or any single server for that matter. Uh, EC2, Nefoscale, Digital Ocean, Linode, uh, Soft Layer, Rackspace, uh, and uh, I don't think I have forgotten something. Okay. So, this would be our username, a super secret password, auth URL, and the usual admin tenant name. I will add add, and OpenStack admin is added. I don't like this name, so I will rename it to Icehouse, because it is an Icehouse installation after all. And now I can go to the machines. These are, these are all of my running instances. I would like to create one. We have Athens, Paris. Let's create an Atlanta one. I will select the newly created OpenStack Icehouse, a Fedora image, a tiny size for that matter. Now, for the keys, I have added some SSH keys. For this demo, we'll auto-generate one. Let's call it dummy. Well, Mistio uses keys uh, for one purpose, uh, for two purposes, actually. The first one is to provide a cell access. We will see that later. And uh, the second one is to install CollectD to the machine. In case you don't want uh, to add an SSH key, you can manually install CollectD and configure it to send all the metrics to Mist.io. Uh, I can run any script I want. And after the machine pro is provisioned, then this script will be run. And I can enable monitoring. But those two, uh, we will do that uh, later. So we will launch the machine. It is in Atlanta. It's in pending state. And uh, while we're, we're waiting for the SSH server to come up, let's take a look at Paris. OK. We wait for it to fetch the server stats. Great. This time, we'll start from the bottom. And uh, what I can see here is some basic info, the uptime, the last probe, and some uh, extra info. Uh, those are info that the API of its uh, backend sends us. Uh, to Maybe it's uh, useful. So this is a monitor machines, machine. I have metrics for RAM, CPU usage, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I can add another metric. Each collect the instance sends us all the available metrics, and we can monitor every one of them. So for example, if I would like to know the ping plugin, I have added that to the machine. And the very cool stuff is that I can add custom metrics. Custom metrics are just simple Python lines uh, of code that return a value, whatever value that is. And we can monitor literally everything. For example, in this case, I have added a custom Python plugin, which is that. This is the temperature of Paris. And from that, I can begin mo doing more cool stuff. So I would like to add a rule and say that if the temperature, it will fix, <laughs> drops below zero, then for any value, then alert me because I don't know. I have to change clothes. Other thing I can do is tag the machine. For example, I would like to 
add the demo tag to this machine, because we will need that later to handle all the machines. We said that this one is a bare metal server. We have this house is our OpenStack uh, ice house installation, and we have configured some silometer plugins, the total vCPUs used, the instances. We have created an instance, so we share here that from six it got to seven, and we can do exactly the same, add rules, etc., etc. For example, if instances go below six, then alert me, I think. Ah, I don't have a Thunderbird up and running. It will alert me. Let's go back to the Atlanta machine that we just created. Here it is, and I think it is ready. So here I can have access. Cell access, it is a fully featured cell, so I am here, and I can use all the bus commands. For example, if I can do it right, I can install htop because everyone loves htop. It will just take one minute, I think, and we are about to get done. Okay then, and here it is htop. The cool thing with that it is, is that uh, that's the way it looks in your cell phone or your tablet or any device. So let's go back and talk more about some networks. Here are all my available networks, two for the OpenStack Juno installation and one for the OpenStack Icehouse installation. I would like to create another one. I will call that ParisNet and create a subnet, the Paris sub, with a dummy network address. And a dummy gateway. I will enable the DHCP server and add some allocation pools. If there is no typo, I think we'll have our new network in about a few seconds here. Yes, and now when I want to provision another machine, this network will be available in this network tab. The cool thing with Mr. is that uh, in alongside with our graphical user interface that uh, we have a RESTful API that helps us uh, build tools around it. So for example, we have the mist command line tool and I can do almost everything from the command line. So for example, I can list all of my backends or I can list all of my machines for the backend. Let's say OpenStack Juno. This will take just one minute. Okay. Another cool thing is that everything that happens in Mist.io happens and is being refreshed and updated in real time. So, for example, if I wanted to add another key, I would name it uh, Paris Demo, and I would ask Mist.io to auto generate one. Paris Demo key. Paris Demo, yeah. okay. Yes. Then Demo 2. Yay. <laughs> and it worked. And finally, I can do something like this. I will run command. That's something. In all the machines that are tagged demo. This takes some time. And what's uh, happening under the hood, Dimitris mentioned that before, we have integrated Ansible. And uh, Mistio uses all the available information from the machines, the IP, the user, the SSH keys, etc., etc. It produces Ansible host file and runs Ansible through Ansible commands or whatever other mo Ansible module you want to uh, these machines. So for example, if I go now to the Paris machine, And we wait a few, okay. I think some patience is in use. And something is there. Yay. So let's go back to the presentation. All right, this is all really cool. And it's pretty much what we had in mind uh, when we started building Mist.io. But what really amazed us is the different and unexpected ways our uh, users uh, are uh, putting our tools in use. So 
I will uh, mention two of those use cases. Yesterday it was uh, the congressional elections in the US and uh, PCCC, the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, is a political organization co-founded by Aaron Swartz um, and they have more than a million members. We're really proud of the role that Mr. Io played. Maybe it was the first time that a cloud management tool uh, was used to promote net neutrality. So uh, PCCC, they developed a tool called PIES, uh, which they provide to selected uh, candidates. And uh, one of, of the things that it does is that it runs polling campaigns over the phone. So candidates can um, uh, launch new campaigns, and when they do, PIES uses Mistio to spin up uh, VMs, either online node or on uh, DigitalOcean, uh, deploys the polling code, and uh, then the poll begins. During that time, the PCCC staff can monitor the process uh, using system metrics, while the candidates can monitor, again, their polling process using custom metrics provided by Mistio, like the number of pending calls and the number of remaining calls. When the number of remaining calls reaches zero, Mistio triggers the cleanup process by sending all the polling data to an S3 bucket and destroying the machine. What's really cool about that is that uh, this whole system was uh, implemented within a couple of weeks uh, thanks to this automation uh, functionality. And at the very last moment, uh, they decided to switch uh, cloud providers and this was uh, really easy, just a, change, just a line of code had to be changed. Uh, another prominent uh, customer of ours is Spirant Communications. They're a bi they are a company founded in 1936, and their business is uh, testing telecommunication networks. So their clients are telcos, and um, their latest product is SDN, automated SDN and uh, NFV testing. SDN is software-defined networking, and NFV stands for Network Functions Virtualization. So as more telcos are looking into a future where uh, more of their, their functions are virtualized, their network functionality is virtualized, they want to be sure that they don't sacrifice anything in terms of reliability, performance, and security. So the purpose of uh, these testing procedures is to uh, perform functional and performance tests and to probe for security vulnerabilities. Uh, Spirant does all that uh, through OpenStack installations, and they want to be able to test using different uh, distributions of OpenStack and integrate all that in uh, their in-house process. Their goal is uh, speed and ease of use of uh, test lab setup uh, to minimize cost by using commodity hardware and uh, to have a repeatable process testing procedure. So with help them help them with that by providing on-demand uh, installations of OpenStack uh, on top of uh, cloud and bare metal servers provided by Nefoscale, a uh, cloud uh, provider in California. Um, Nefoscale has an API not only for uh, provisioning cloud VMs, but also uh, for uh, provisioning bare metal machines. And we use uh, both the, open the Nefoscale API and the OpenStack API. No, for provisioning and also for the network configuration, including uh, some more sophisticated uh, setups like uh, L2 and L3 networks per tenant and VXLANs. Um, once the machines, uh, the OpenStack deployments are up and running, Mr. IO takes care of monitoring the host nodes, the bare metal servers, the guest VMs, and also the testing process to emit uh, actionable alerts and also to trigger uh, auto scaling. And auto scaling not only on the application level by spinning up new VMs inside OpenStack that join the network functions, uh, but also on the OpenStack level by provisioning new bare, bare metals that become compute or network nodes. Uh, if you'd like to know more about uh, that, we can. Uh, would love to talk to you later. Uh, this is pretty much what we had uh, to show you. Uh, the goal of Mistio is to set you free from vendor and uh, platform lock-in. Uh, it can monitor any machine that you have, uh, like bare metals, uh, VMs, and containers. It can emit actionable alerts. That you can act on them from anywhere you are, from any device. It's trivial to configure automation in the form of executing cell commands and uh, 
rebooting servers, upscaling and downscaling. Uh, so that's all from us. Uh, the next steps that we're working on, uh, we're uh, doing some uh, improvements of the user experience, like adding uh, custom graphs uh, with multiple metrics, custom dashboards. Um, we're looking into reporting in terms of usage and cost analysis, uh, and also reporting on the cloud providers themselves to tell you if they're keeping the promises in terms of SLA compliance, you know, in terms of availability and performance. Uh, we're about to release a native Android application, and we're working on an iOS one. And we're adding support for multiple users uh, with granular, granular access permissions and an audit uh, uh, trail of every action. Uh, we believe this will be useful not only to large organizations using Mist.io um, with different users with different roles, but also for people that want help uh, solving DevOps problems, so they can share access, limited access, to with a friend or colleague and uh, have a complete log of all the actions that uh, were performed on their server. So we believe this way Mist.io will become a social DevOps platform in the same way that uh, GitHub is a social coding platform. That's all for us. We'd love to hear any questions you may have. Um, yeah. Um, so you yeah, in order to add new clouds, add new backends. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you're adding, for example, Azure, you need to uh, upload the certificate file. With EC2, we, yes. Uh, so in the hosted solution, we keep them in our, in our database. We take security very seriously because, as you understand, a bridge would be catastrophic for us and our clients. Uh, there is also a self, uh, you can also host it yourself. If you don't want to hand out uh, your credentials, you can uh, have an on-premise installation of Mist.io. Um, and the same applies to the SSH keys and uh, your credentials, your cloud credentials. Yeah, this is uh, our next steps. I mentioned reporting in terms of yeah, performance. You can do that yourself if you have a script. You can spin up servers and run the same script in different servers with similar configuration and measure. Uh, but uh, yeah, we will be doing that automatically later on. Any other questions? OK. Um, Thank you very much. Uh, we would love to hear any uh, battle stories you may have in terms of automation, and especially any desires, the unfulfilled desires, and see if we can help you with that. Please come talk to us or send us an, e an email at info at Thank you.